What is happening, everybody? Welcome back to Dark Horse Sports Cards. You got Brody here for another fun and exciting video. We're going back to 2023 Prism. It has been a hot minute since we've opened any Prism on the channel, and I am very excited. Uh, these have the short print white and black checker prisms. We're going to see three of those in here. We also only get one green ice prism. So if you can hit that on one of the big rookies, that is a massive card. We're going to be getting two silver prisms, 24 packs per box, four cards per pack. Um, and then I don't know if there's really anything else you're really looking for. Yeah, no number cards, no autographs, nothing like that. You're really just hunting those beautiful green ice prism cards and obviously the black and white checkers as well. So we're gonna jump into it right now and boy do I have a story to tell you guys. I guess real quick, the price on these things. Um, I wanna say when these initially dropped, they were just over $100. I haven't checked, I'll put up on the screen what they're going for now, secondhand market. I think they're pretty expensive. I wouldn't be shocked if these are close to a $200 box. With that being said, drop a like on the video. Appreciate it, thank you so much. It helps out a lot. Uh, dropping a like, dropping a comment always helps us keep making more videos for you guys. We appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, what are you waiting for? We're trying to hit 15,000 subscribers and uh, we're not too far off. So help us get to the number. But let's go in to a little story time as we go through these 24 packs. So as you may know, we started this YouTube channel channel back in January. And if you go back in January and watch some of our earlier videos, you will see that we really had no idea what we were doing. All we really knew is we loved opening cards. We loved seeing cards and uh, testing out all the different sets and all that stuff. I think we've learned a lot, obviously, throughout the last couple of months. But we started in a very unfamiliar, very new spot. And I spent a lot of time watching videos, learning uh, just about the industry. Again, I'm not a huge fan of calling it a hobby. I think it's a hobby if you collect cards, right? Then it's a hobby. But if you are making money off of it and trying to make money off of it, it is not a hobby, my friends. That is a straight up business. And I'll be the first to be transparent with you and say, we love opening cards, but obviously we are now over on whatnot breaking as well. And so it's no longer just a hobby. We are making money over there. So you gotta call it, a, call, gotta call it like it is. It's a business. Um, we're getting a couple base packs here to start. At least we're getting these out of the way. We do get a nice little Stetson Bennett though. So. We started breaking over on whatnot in March. And again, no idea what we were doing. I basically threw myself in and uh, trial by error, learned a lot of stuff. A lot of you guys that are over there that were, you know, let me know in the comments, were you there for the early days over on whatnot? Some of the first streams that we did. A lot of you guys really helped me out on what to do, what not to do. And I'm very, very appreciative of how, uh, how nice you guys were in the comments helping us kind of on some of those early streams when we were trying to figure it out. But I spent a lot of time over there. I spent a lot of time watching what other breakers are doing, you know, taking some things that I like and saying, oh, those are things I definitely want to shy away from and not do. Um, because again, even though it is a business for us, oh, we got our first black and white. Even though it is a business for us, this is not our main source of income. So for those that are maybe new or watching this video for the first time, uh, Kelsey is a cheerleader for the Raiderettes. I'm a professional disc golfer. I also have been doing social media for, I don't know, over a decade now. So we have many different forms of, uh, I have two disc golf companies. We have many different forms of income coming in. Uh, so we're not really always about the bottom line. How do we make as much money as we possibly can uh, breaking? So with that being said, we're going to do things a lot different than a lot of other people. All right, let's just sweat this one real quick. Should be upside down. Oh, Eagles, rookie. Uh, Eagles, rookie, Jalen Carter. Tanner McKee, it is a rookie quarterback. So that is nice. Um, but centered, not great. You can, the checkerboard's also really easy to tell the centering because 
you can see the line. See that extra little line at the top? And then this one doesn't have it. You can also just look in the corners and see how squared they are in the corner. So the checkerboard makes it pretty easy. Uh, so this would probably be like a nine, a PSA nine, I would say, because left to right, it's not that bad. But top to bottom, it's a little heavy on the top. Um, but what I was saying is, I've spent a lot of time on whatnot and on TikTok and on YouTube watching, seeing how a lot of breakers do it. Uh, shout out to RGL, shout out to... Um, uh, Acme Packs, shout out to We The Hobby, all these different companies that I've been watching. Honestly, as much as kind of I wasn't a fan of Backyard Breaks and some of the uh, shenanigans they got into, studying their repacks and stuff definitely helped me in creating our repacks. So I do have to give them a little bit of a shout out, even though I am wary with uh, some of the shenanigans they have pulled in the past. Uh, some of the repack stuff that I've learned from them has been definitely helpful. First silver, this could be massive, and it's not going to be because it's Jacoby Myers. So I've done all that, right? I've done all the research. I've, I've watched and everything, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a lurker. We talk about the lurkers we have on whatnot. We love the lurkers. You don't have to get into our breaks uh, to have fun over there. You can still just watch us rip cards because at the end of the day, that is what we're doing. We are just ripping a bunch of cards. Tyreek Stevenson there for the Bears. And so I was doing my thing. I was lurking and checking out some different shows, and I was actually on TikTok, which, wow, is TikTok the Wild Wild West when it comes to breaking. If you think whatnot's the Wild Wild West, holy smokes, TikTok is something else. So I was in a show, and uh, the guy was opening cards, and he was kind of doing his thing. That's going to be KJ Henry. And basically, he was hyping up a card. Which, okay, we hype up cards all the time here um, with how they look. Last night, the perfect example. We pulled, we pulled a disgusting, and I might have the video here that I can show you guys. If I do, I'll put it, the video right here. It's a disgusting card. A dual patch with the letters from Vikings. Jordan Addison, rookie. Absolutely disgusting. I believe it was out five out of five. And, I mean, obviously I'm going to hype that card up because it's one of the coolest looking cards I've ever pulled. Now, when the value of that card comes out, it doesn't necessarily change my viewpoint. Jay Kaner. Doesn't change my viewpoint on how cool I think the card looks. But... I no longer, um, you know, if I'm saying this card looks disgusting, I got, I, I would think this card's a $200 card. It turns out the card actually is pretty expensive. But oh, here, here's the big card right here. Green Ice. This is the big boy. This is Green Ice. True Green Ice. This is massive if it's on a good rookie. But if it turns out that that card, you know, let's say it's $50, I'm no longer going to continue to tell someone that is a $200 card. That is technically scamming someone. Whenever you are basically lying to a customer, if you have information that you know, and you are lying to a customer and telling them basically something is way more valuable than it actually is. And I get it. I understand there's a lot of people that use the excuse of like, well, the value is an eye of the beholder and like people value things differently. Me and Kelsey were there. Go back and watch some of our earlier uh, Instagram videos and look at the comments of people being like, why are you getting so excited for an $8 card? Well, it's because it's the first time we've ever pulled the card. Or maybe it's because it's a, one of our favorite players. Or maybe because the card is just really, really sick looking. Those are things are all fine. But if a card is selling for $50, $50, $52, $48, $50, $51, you cannot say that that card is worth $200. You can't. It's worth $50. So when someone starts doing that, they are scamming their people. And a lot of people, including myself, when I first came in, I had no idea what I was looking at. I have no idea. Oh, it's not a, uh, this is not a true. I lied. Kind of, see, look at that. I lied. Boom. I thought it was a true. It wasn't. It was a hype. So basically what happened, long story short, is this guy's hyping up a card and someone in the chat threw a comp up. And said, that is a $10 card. Okay? Just said, that's... I think this is our true. 
This Arjun, I love the colors. Hold on. Hold on to the story. I love the colors here. Be a lion. Be Mr. Gibbsy. Be a lion. Be a rook. Be golf. Oh, Kirby Joseph. All right. That was a little bit of a sweat there. That could have been massive if that was anyone. I mean, Cam uh, Campbell, Laporta, Gibbs, Hooker. If that was any one of those, that would have been a massive card. So the guy just says that's a $10 card. Now, the breaker makes a big stink about it. And basically, like, addresses everyone and addresses the person and says, hey, pay attention. There's a moment you'll never forget. Julius Brent's there. And ends up basically saying, like, this is the last time you'll ever be in my show. And then bans the guy. Okay? Straight up just bans the guy for saying that is a $10 card. So I'm at the time right now. I'm shaving my beard, which, as you guys can tell, it's a little bit shorter now. I'm shaving my beard at the time. And I hear him say this. And I'm like, wait, what? So then I write in the chat, uh, are people, are, do you not allow, I think I said this, I said, do, do you not allow people to comp cards in the chat? Is what I said. And then all of a sudden, there he is. All right, well, we got one here. All of a sudden, I get thrown into a different live stream. And now I've never been banned before in any live stream ever. I did get banned by Rowdy Rips, actually, but then he unbanned me when everyone was like, did you just ban Brody? Oh my gosh, why did you ban Brody? Uh, then he, I guess he freaked out and then unbanned me. So technically, I guess I have been banned before, but this was the first time that, like, just out of the blue, the dude bans me. And I was like, wait, what? And I was like, okay, if... And this, is, and this is what I'll say, because I know a lot of you guys are watching are very new to the sports cards, just like me. You're getting into breaking. You're trying to figure out who to break with. Hey, Jalen Hyatt. See, that's not bad. That's probably like a $10 card. Maybe maybe 30 and a PSA 10. We'll see. I'll put up the comps down here. Or wait, up there. Wait, up, up there. We'll see how close I am. PSA 10, I'm going $30 for a silver Jalen Hyatt. We'll see how close I am. Um, but if you're trying to figure out like, Hey Brody, I'm trying to get into other breaks. I don't want to get scammed. I don't want to get taken advantage of. How do I know who to break with? Well, I'll tell you this. Here are some signs of who not to break with. If someone bans someone for comping cards, run, run, absolutely run. And then if someone bans someone for asking a question of, do you allow people to comp cards? Run like the life, the, your life depended on it. Because at the end of the day, guys, what people really want, and when they're after as much money as they possibly can, what they really want to do is not let you know that they bought this box for $60 and they're now trying to sell it to you for $200. They don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that you just spent $100 on a card that's worth 10. They don't want you to know on that. And, and my issue with that is that's very short-sighted. Because eventually, you guys, if you're new, you will get smart. Just like me and Kelsey. Oh my gosh. If that was a rookie packer, there would have been so many. That would have been awesome. Uh, we got Preston Smith. But eventually, over time, you guys will get smart and you will learn what is good, what is bad, and all that stuff. And you'll remember, wait a second, this guy was telling me this way back in the day. Wow, the guy was straight up lying to me. And then you won't have any trust with that guy. And in a business like this, in a business like sports cards where you, the customer, are paying the breaker to open cards for you to take care of those cards, to ship those cards, to make sure that you're not pulling a Preston, let's say this was a Jaden Reed, making sure you're not pulling a Jaden Reed and it's a little off-centered, or sorry, it's perfectly centered, and they have a Jaden Reed already, the same as that card that's off-centered, and they basically just switch and they send you the off-centered one, and they keep the centered one. 
There are so many things that you as the clientele have to trust in the person you are doing business with in this business. It makes absolutely no sense for someone to try to rip you off, Jamar Chase. Because once you get ripped off, you will no longer trust that person with anything. And so you will never no, no longer give that person business. And I get what they're doing. They're like, well, we get people, new people coming in all the time. It's just not a good way to build a business. So though, that is my little uh, on the stepping stool. I know some person, some people are going to be like, name the guy, name the guy. We want names. Who is it? And normally I will let you guys know who like the bad, the bad breakers are. And I mean, again, you guys can tell. Jump into a break. If someone's yelling at you to bid more, uh, probably not someone you want to be breaking with. If someone's insulting you or telling you guys you have no idea what you're doing, probably not someone you want to break with. Uh, you really want to break with someone that is there to basically help you and give you advice, give you information, just like the same way as I don't want to go play blackjack with a dealer that just sits there and doesn't talk and is super whatever. Like I want someone to be like, hey, I got two eights, should I split? I want someone to tell me what the book says. And good and good blackjack dealers will. Good blackjack dealers will all also interact. Trey Tucker, this is my guy. This is my guy. Had a great game. Great first preseason game. And uh, so, you know, you, you'll you go and you'll try to find that blackjack dealer next time you go to the casino. It's the same thing with breaking. You know, there are some people that will just yell at you to bid more. And if that's what you want to do, uh, we're going to save this one. That's our last black and white. Or you can go to other breakers that put on more of a show and have more of a show kind of environment and the uh, the chat's better and everything. So that's what I have to say about that. Um, I won't name any names, but the hobby. And there is Patrick Sertain on the Green Ice Emergent. We're down to our last three packs. One already open with the black and white checkerboard. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it this far, shout out to all my tadpoles. All my tadpoles out there making it this far. Uh, it's been pretty rough, I would say. This rip. Pretty rough one. I think we got a Jameer Gibbs. Our black and whites haven't been great. And we haven't got really any rookies green ices. And that's really what you're after here. We'll do a recap at the end so you can kind of see. Uh, and then we finish with the base. All right. So we really need... Um, Something here, because as you can see, we got a Murphy, Green Ice Sertan, Trey Tucker Base, Charlie Jones, Derek Hall, uh, Jamar Chase, Preston Smith, Paris Johnson. That's probably our best card, honestly, Silver Jalen Hyatt. We did get a, a nice base, Jameer, Julius Brintz, Kirby Joseph, swing and a miss there on a Green Ice, Drake London, Hayner, CJ, uh, KJ Henry, Stevenson, Tanner McGee, um, Probably decent, probably like five bucks, maybe would be my guess. Five to ten dollars. Eric Gray, Setson Bennett, and then a Joe Burrow, which is probably going to be a couple dollar card as well. So, uh, I mean, for a box this expensive, the reason why it's so expensive is you have the chance of pulling a black. This is the only place you can pull black and white checkerboard. And if you pull a black and white checkerboard of one of the big rookies and it gems, it is just a monster, a monster card. So here we go. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe. We're also going live on Whatnot tonight. So if you want to check in and be like, Brody, you said that all these people suck at breaking. How are you? Come watch, 7 p.m. Check it out, Bengals. I don't think we want Rookie here. Good. We want Burrow. Show me a ball. We want Chase. We want Tyler Boyd. Well, that was not a good box. Not a good box. Probably got mm, 30, 40, 50, maybe 50 bucks back, I would say. Would be my guess, 50 bucks if I piecemeal and sell all these. Uh, but that's, I mean, that's what you get with Prism. You know, it's a massive checklist. I mean, look how many, it's 400, uh, 400 card set. You know, there's 100 rookies, 300 base. So, very difficult. But there you have it. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you listening to my story. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Keep ripping them packs.